Greetings all you mathematicians out there, all you fabulous grade fives. Welcome to another lesson of maths. Let's jump in. Reminders at the start of the lesson. If you want to email me, I'm Mr. Travis, Mr. T. You can email me grade five at worksheetcloud.com. And after the lesson, click on the link above, do the worksheet, make sure you've got what it is that we're doing today. As per normal, the next slide is mental arithmetic, the thing that keeps us sharp. I've put in a combination of the two additive functions, that's times and plus today. Uh, you get 40 seconds for 10 questions. Uh, first and foremost, you're aiming to get them right. Once you're getting them right regularly, you're aiming to get them done as fast as possible, but still getting them all right. You have 40 seconds. You just need to write down the answer. Your time starts now. And just like that, time's up. So you'll see I paired them. You first got plus and then times the same things. So three plus five is eight. Three times five is 15. Five plus six is 11. Five times six is 30. Seven plus eight is 15. Seven times eight is 56. Nine plus six is 15. Nine times six is 54. Eight plus six is 14. 8 times 6 is 48. If you missed any of those, just rewind the video and watch it again. Next thing that's become a stock of what we do is one of these. Uh, this is slightly more complex uh, than some of the ones we've done because it relies on your knowledge of bed mass. That's the order of operations, which is a topic that we've covered in another lesson. Um, something that you should be familiar with. I'm going to switch across to the whiteboard. Let's see how you do. So just be aware of the order of operations that you need to do. I'll give you a little while to get going with this. The line to start with is number one. It's the only line where both of the things are the same and we can figure out our answer from there. Right, if you need any longer, which I think many of you will if you're actually trying to work it out properly, just pause the video. Uh, you can start it again when you're ready to carry on. So I am going to start with the first line. I need two things that are the same to get to add to 10. So I've got to share 10 equally. So that's 10 divided by 2, which gives me 5. That's not a great color. It's not showing up so well. Yeah, that's not great either. Let's try a light color. That's a bit better. Right, so each of the clear so the round green circles is worth five. I can put all of those in so long. The next line I'm going to work out is the second line because it's the only one where the other two things are the same. But the trick here is that we've got a times and a plus, which means that what we do is going to be done there first. And then when we get this answer, we're going to add whatever comes here. So we've got to time something and then add something, but the thing, the yellow block has to be the same for both. All right, well, when we times, we've got to get, we've got to get an answer of 12. When we times, numbers get big quite quickly. So I'm going to start off with a small number and just see if that works. So let's try one. So five times one is five, plus one is 
6. Well, that doesn't work. Why don't we try 2? 5 times 2 is 10. Then this would be 2 as well. So 10 plus 2 is 12. Okay, good. So we found out what our yellow square is. It's worth 2. So let's put that in and then let's carry on. Again, bod mass plays a role over here. We will do this step first, then we will do this, and then we will minus them, our two answers. So let's start with this one on the left because we already know both of those. So 5 times 2 is 10. So 10 minus something times 5 gives me 5. So what would I times by 5? Hmm, well, I've got 10 over here. And I've got an answer of 5. So together, this needs to give me 5. Because then 10 minus 5 will give me an answer of 5. So I'm only left with the option of doing a 1 over there. Because 1 times 5 is 5. And then I've got 10 minus 5, which will give me 5. Hope you followed that. That seemed in my description like I was being... I was using too many words. All right. Uh, however, that does leave us with the fact that the triangle is 1, because 1 times 5 is 5, and that is in fact all you needed to solve, was what was the triangle worth. So a little bit different from some of the ones that we've done in other lessons, um, but again, as long as you work out simply, logically, in a progression, you'll get to the right answer. So today we're going to be working with ratio. Uh, if you didn't do the lesson, or if you haven't yet done the lesson on the introduction to ratio, and you've never done ratio, then I suggest you start with that and then come back to this lesson. But if you have done the lesson to do with the introduction with ratio, then this should be the next step. So our lesson goals are work practically with ratio to solve problems. Um, so most of the time with ratio, it results in word problems. Let's not waste any time. Let's get across to the whiteboard where I've got some set up. Make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to shift that one out of the way. All right, I've got two problems here. First up, I've got a bag of marbles, a ratio of green to sorry, blue to green. Now remember, when we do ratio, it's important. So blue came first, so this is the blue. Green came next, so this is the green. If there are 27 marbles, how many green marbles will there be? All right. Hmm. I actually need to change that question. I made a mistake when I put the question together. All right. So I was jumping ahead of myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross that out and say if there are 60 marbles. No, no, no. I didn't make a mistake. It's correct. Okay. So if there are 27 blue marbles, how many green marbles were there? So I know that in the original ratio, 9 blue for every 11 green. Right, that's my original ratio. The information I've now been given is that I know how many blue ones there are, but I don't know how many green ones there are. So how do we go about figuring that one out? So remember with ratio, when we worked with it, as long as both sides, you did the same to both sides, we would end up with the same ratio. So let's have a look to see what did we do. What did I do? 2 is 9 to get it to be 27. Let me count in 9s until I get to 27. 9, 18, 27. Okay, and just BT dubs, by the way, um, that's time tables for you. You do need them all the time. Uh, so I times that by 3. And if I want to keep the ratio the same, then I need to times this side by 3 as well to find out how many green marbles there will be. 11 times 3, 11, 22, 33. All right, so that means if I've got 27 blue marbles, I will have 30, 33 green marbles. So how many green marbles will there be? There will be 33. Next question. I don't know how many of you eat endiments or endearments. I don't eat them very often, but uh, I did eat them when I was young, your age. My granny used to bring them for us sometimes. The ratio of white to green is 4 to 5. 
actually don't know if they come in the same packet, but let's pretend they do. So you get white and green ones in the same packet, and the ratio of white to green is 4 to 5. So first up, we need to remind ourselves, or well, I need to just double check, that when I say white to green, I mean that the, that's the order the numbers come in. So there will be 4 white, and there will be 5 green. All right, so just taking note that the order in which they come is important, and it tells us the, the order we say it is the order they come. All right, so I'm using a blue blue for white because we just don't have a white one show up. Okay, so if there are 36 sweets in the bag, how many are green? So unlike in the first problem where I told you how much one of them was, this time I'm telling you how many there are altogether, and now I want to find out how many are green. All right, so ratio means, if I look at that, that for every nine, I'm going to put four in the one side and five in the other side. So four white and five green. For every nine endearments, there are four white and five green. So let's see, we were looking at a packet of 36. So what did I do to nine to get to 36? Nine, 18, 27, 36. I don't know what's going on with that dog, but it's making a lot of noise. All right, so we've got four groups of nine. All right, and if we've got four groups of nine, that means we're going to have four groups of white ones, 16. Four times four is 16, and five times four is 20. So if we have 36, 16 of them will be white, and 20 of them will be green. The question, however, was how many of them are green? And so the answers are the 20 are green. Okay, let's have a look at the next two problems I've posed for you. This is the sort of stock standard, slightly easier version of the question. So, if, so what you could be given is uh, a ratio, and then you get one of the final number, and you need to work out the other, or you're given a ratio and the total, and then you need to work out one or the other. Let's look at this one. So a ratio of maths lessons, maths lessons to English lessons in your school at your school is 10 to 9. In other words, for every 10 maths lessons you have, you have 9 English lessons. If you have 50 maths lessons in a month, how many English lessons will you have? So let's take a look at that. This is actually like one we've just done. So first up, maths to English means that it's in that order, maths to English. So I started off with a ratio. Oh, let me do it on the side. My ratio of maths lessons. So maths was fifth. Oh. 10 to 9. All right, and that's English. Now I've been given that I get 50 maths lessons in a month, and I want to know how many English lessons I have. So I need to work out what I did to one to 10 to get to 50. Let me count in tens until I get to 50. 10, 15, sorry, 10, 30, 20, 30, 40, 50 times five. And if I did that to that side, I've got to do it to that side as well. So I'm going to times this side by five as well. Nine times five is 45, which means that my English lessons, I have 45 of them. Forty-five English lessons per month. All right. Now we have a slightly different kind of question, uh, looking for a slightly different thing. So a restaurant has two different heights of tables. It's got some of those tall tables and some of the short ones. And obviously the tall tables have tall chairs and the short tables have short chairs. So the ratio of tall chairs to short chairs is five to six. So they're less. So the first number is the tall chairs, and the second number is the short chairs. Uh, if there are 40 tall chairs, how many are, chairs are there all together? Okay, so we were given this information. We started off with a ratio of 5 to 6. That's tall chairs and short chairs. Now we were told that in real life, or in actual fact, there are 40, and we need to figure out how many short chairs there are. So what did I do to a 5 to make it into 40? 
Let me count in fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I am multiplied by 8. And if I did it to that side, I must do the same to the other side. So 6 times 8 is 48. Pretty sure that was one of our mental arithmetics for today. Okay, but the question is, how many chairs are there all together? So it's not asking for short chairs or tall chairs. It's asking how many all together. Well, there are 40 of the, short, of the tall chairs and 48 of the short chairs. And to find out the all together, we're going to need to add those together. So 40 plus 48 equals, uh, you shouldn't need to add, you need to do any difficult maths. You should be able to do this in your head. That's 80. Sorry, after I said in your head, I made a mistake. That's 88. All right, so there are 88 chairs all together okay so a slightly different version we were given one the ratio we were told one amount we had to figure out the other and then we needed to put it together to get the total these are all the sorts of questions that you can get with ratio although these are some of the sort of harder questions and the majority of questions at grade five level are going to be like the first couple uh, these ones where you just have to split it up Okay, but just because you might not get all of these hard ones doesn't mean it's not worth practicing with these ones. Okay, um, let's do the second of these first because uh, the first one is a little bit harder. So your mom shares out a bag of toffees between you and your dad. You get nine and then you want to know how unfair things are and you ask your mom how many your dad got. Uh, but she only tells you the ratio she's thinking ah he doesn't know ratio or she doesn't know ratio and she thinks that you won't be able to figure it out anyway so she tells you the ratio of you to your dad so how many you get to how many your dad get is three to five so you've got to figure out how many your dad got well this is a little bit like one of those ones that we've done before so we know the ratio is three to five and that's you to your dad. We now know that you got nine and we want to figure out how many your dad got. What did we do to a three to get to nine? Three, six, nine. We multiplied by three, which means that on this side we have to multiply by three as well. How unfair is that? Your dad got 15 and you only got nine. So your dad got 15. Okay, that brings us to the most complicated one that I've put together for this week, and that's this one. All right, on market day at school, Zander and Juliet and Zander, I just used my niece and nephew's name, Juliet and Zander pair up and make a stall selling pancakes. Juliet contributes 50 rands worth of stuff, and Zander contributes 40 rands worth of stuff. So they haven't contributed the same. They agree to share the profits, so that's the money they make, uh, according to the uh, ratio of their contributions. If they make 63 Rand profit, how much do they each get? Now, this is one of those problems that has a few steps when it comes to working out. So first out, we have to work out the ratio um, that we've got. So Juliet gave 50 Rand's worth of stuff, and we used her name first, so she's the first number. Zander. Uh, his full name is Alexander, but they just call him Zander. Uh, Zander gave 40 Rand. All right, so let's work out the ratio. So remember for ratio, we want to express it in its simplest form. So we've got to ask ourselves, is there a number that goes into 50 and 40? And if you remember your divisibility rules, if it ends in a zero, we know that 10 goes in. So 10 goes into 50 five times, and 10 goes into 40 four times. So the ratio that they, sh they, they contributed is 5 to 4. For every 5 Rand Juliet gave, Zonda gave 4 Rand. So that's the ratio they're going to use. Now the question then asks, they're going to share the profit equally. All right. So together, that's 9 Rand. So for every 9 Rand, 5 Rand was Juliet's and 4 Rand was Zonda's. So now we've been given this number. 63 and we need to share it out in the same way 
What did I do to a 9 to get to 63? Let me just shift my page across a little bit. So what did I get for, to get from 9 to 63? Well, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63. Oh, I multiplied it by 7. So I have 7 groups of 9. And what I then need to do is to find 5 groups of 9 and 4 groups of 9. So 5 times 9, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. And four groups of nine, nine, eighteen, twenty-seven, thirty-six. So if we're sharing out the profit equally according to this ratio, or well not equally, we're sharing out the profit according to the ratio, then Juliet will get forty-five and Zander will get thirty-six. So going back to there, we can now see we've just got to put that into words. So Juliet gets 45 rand and Sander gets 36 rand. And if you add those two together, you'll see that it comes to 63. Zander might argue that they should rather do it a different way. And perhaps if you have an EMS project like this, you might do this. So what they could do, because we were looking at profit, you could say, well, we're not looking at the total amount they made, we're just looking at profit. So we had, so first of all, they get their money back that they spent. So the 50 Rand will go back to, oh, you can't see where I'm writing. All right, so the 50 Rand will go back to Juliet, the 40 Rand will go back to Zonda, and then after that, they have 63 Rand that they still have left over that they need to share. And I think Xander would probably argue that you should share that equally because that's their work. They've already been paid back the amount they put in. Because profit refers to what you've got left over after you've covered all your expenses. Anyway, that doesn't matter. That was their agreement that they would share the profit that way. Um, and um, yeah, so that's that's the sort of question. So this is quite a difficult question with quite a few steps. So first up, you had to work out the ratio that they were contributing. Then you had to work out how to share the profit based on that ratio. So there's more than one step to that problem. And that's probably about as difficult as you'll get with ratio problems. In fact, you probably won't even get that hard. Maybe that'll be for grade six. But if you learn it this year, then you've got it for next year. Okay, that is all that we're going to cover in this lesson. Uh, so just a reminder, when you're done, click on that worksheet, work out some problems on your, on your own, because it's the working out your problems on your own that sort of gets it stuck in your brain. I like to refer to it as it cements in your brain so that it's there permanently. And next time, next year, when you have had such a long break before you do it again, you'll still be able to do it because you've practiced it. If you want to email me about a topic you'd like to cover in future, anything like that, it's grade5 at worksheetcloud.com. Great fives, thanks for joining us. Have an absolutely awesome day. Goodbye.